Hi there. Welcome to all our advanced subsidiary level history learners. We appreciate your company. Today we will look at Japan's treatment at the Paris talks. Thank you for joining us. You will find this topic in your syllabus under international relations. AS learners should be able to assess in an exam how the Allies treated Japan at the Paris Peace Conference. Similar to Italy, after World War I, Japan also turned against its former war partners, the Allies, in the Second World War. How was Japan treated at the Treaty of Versailles? Did this have anything to do with why Japan turned their backs on their former allies? Join us as we find out this and more. AS learners should be able to assess the effect of the Paris Peace Treaties on Japan. Now, let's get started. Learners will get back to the past soon. But first, how much do you know about Japan? Let's see where the country is and what its contribution has been. The Japanese flag looks like this, a bright red dot. Japan is an island country lying off the coast of Asia. It consists of a great stream of islands through the western North Pacific Ocean. Nearly the entire land area is taken up by four main islands. The capital, Tokyo, is one of the world's most famous cities. More than 80% of the Japanese landscape consists of mountains, which many active and dormant volcanoes, lots of rain, and cold temperatures. Consequently, Japan has a lush vegetation, raises a variety of crops, including well-ordered rice fields and fruit orchards in the country. It has intricate and ancient cultural traditions, but these traditions contrast strongly with the smog-filled industries in the cities. Since 1950, Japan has emerged as one of the world's most economically and technologically advanced societies. So, there is understandably high tension between old and new in all faces of Japanese life. Education in Japan is high priority and this has made it one of the world's most literate countries. Japan decided to become a modern industrialized nation and wanted a large overseas empire. Late in 1941 this caused direct confrontation with the United States and its allies, which led to Japan's defeat in World War II. However, since the war, Japan has shown spectacular economic growth and is now at the forefront of the world's economy. It is one of the world's foremost manufacturing countries and traders and is a global financial leader. Quite an impressive country, hey? Sure, what a beautiful country, but mostly in the countryside. However, 
most money is obviously made in the smoggy, industrialised cities. It's sometimes hard to bring concepts of the old world and the new world together and that is why we wanted to show you the Japan as the Japanese know it before presenting its war history. In the previous scene, we learned that Japan's ambitions brought it in conflict with the United States and its allies in World War II. Let's go even further back to the First World War and see what happened there. In the First World War, Japan fought on the side of the Allies, just like Italy. They fought against Germany, each for their own reasons. Japan had their own expectations of what they might gain at the Paris Peace Conference. We will look at the impact that the Paris Peace Treaties had on Japan. But first, why did Japan join World War I? Japan decided to get some prestige in world affairs. The Japanese wanted to expand its sphere of influence in China and the Pacific. This is why Japan joined the war effort on the side of the Allies on the 23rd of August 1914 against Germany. Then the war began and Japan was keen to make its mark on the world stage. But why were the Allied powers keen to have Japan on their side. What did Japan have to offer the Allies? Learners should be prepared to discuss the following question. Describe the way in which the Allied powers relied on Japan during World War I. Japan played a genuinely important role in World War I. Japan occupied German leased territories in the Far East and several of Germany's island colonies in the Pacific. In this way, it protected the sea lanes in the West Pacific Ocean and Indian Ocean against the German Navy and in fact destroyed German raiders in and around the Chinese waters. Japan also assisted Britain in the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, learners, are you still enjoying the drama of Japan in the First World War? We have so far seen that Japan joined the war because it wanted prestige for itself in world affairs and to expand its sphere of influence in China and the Pacific. Japan had not fought in World War I but the Allied forces needed Japan. As Japan was strategically positioned to protect the sea lanes in the West Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean against the German Navy, and it also assisted Britain in the Mediterranean, the Allies and Japan met to discuss what each other would get out of their cooperation in the war effort. What were Japan's expectations? Your question could look like this. Describe what Japan hoped to gain from the Paris Peace Conference. We have already seen that Japan wanted recognition. This is one of the reasons why Japan went to the Paris Peace Conference. It wanted to be recognized as a nation equal to the victors of the war, as it played an important role in the war. As we have also seen, its role was to effectively neutralize German controlled territories in China and Oceania, and even sent battleships to the Indian Ocean, which secured a victory against Germany. Just like Italy in the Balkans, 
Japan primarily wanted to secure more land. Japan wanted some of Germany's former colonies that it had occupied during World War I. Indeed, Britain and France had promised Japan that it would annex the former German colonies in Asia and the Pacific as a reward for its involvement in the war. Japan also wanted to maintain its interest in Manchuria with its rich mineral resources. The USA and Japan had signed the Lansen Aishi Agreement back in 1917 to recognize Japan's interest in Manchuria and Japan wanted that agreement to be honored. A sensitive point for Japan was that it wanted the conference to acknowledge all races as equal. Japan brought a proposal which it wanted included in the treaty as a clause which would affirm the equality of all nations regardless of race. Learners, racial discrimination did not start with South Africa. The Paris Peace Conference would not recognize Japan as an equal, despite the enormous strength it had brought to the war. Japan was hugely disappointed with how the Paris Peace Conference turned out. Remember, they had no reason to get involved in the war, seeing as Germany did not pose any threat to Japan's land. The Allies asked Japan to get involved. You could be asked to discuss this question. Why did the Paris Peace Conference not satisfy Japan? At the peace talks, Japan's leaders felt that they were not being treated as peers of the so-called Big Four, which were Britain, France, the United States and Italy. Japan felt, compared to the portions of the territory given to France, Britain and the USA, its portions were smaller. Japan felt its rewards did not match the effort it invested in the war. They assisted the Allies from the beginning of the war in 1914 until the end, and the war efforts costed money and soldiers' lives. Japan wanted to be given complete control of China. The Treaty of Versailles failed to endorse the principle of equality of all races. The French and British did not treat the Japanese, an Asian nation, as equal partners. The Equality Clause Japan proposed at the conference was rejected, which started tension between Japan and the Western nations. It was especially hurtful because it was Britain that opposed Japan's racial equality claim. The very country that asked the Japanese for assistance at the beginning of war and for more help in 1916. So viewers, Britain's refusal to accept Japan's claim for racial equality certainly felt like a slap in the face. Britain and Japan were allies since 1902 and even before that. How could Britain have requested support from Japan if they regarded Japan as inferior to themselves? On what grounds did Britain have the right to disregard Japan? If most delegates at the League of Nations felt that Japan's claim for racial equality was valid, now we know that it's not about how you are treated 
that matters, but how you respond to it, that would have a lasting impact. So our question is, how did Japan react to the rejection of the racial equality proposal? There are traditionally two views to describe Japan's response to its rejection. Japan responded with dissatisfaction to its perceived biased treatment from Britain. Japan also felt humiliated and inferior despite its military dominance in Asia and its economic power. The rejection also became fuel for the Pan-Asian objective. Japan then pursued to liberate the rest of Asia from Western dominance. Japan could henceforth point to 1919 to show how the League of Nations was founded on unjust principles. Another view about this matter is that Japan could have disregarded the rejection of the racial equality claim at the League of Nations because it was still a permanent member with veto rights. In fact, most countries at the League of Nations consider Japan as an equal. It also received the same benefits as other allies in the League. For this reason, some felt that there was no reason for Japan to feel unnecessarily sensitive about the rejection. Which view do you agree with? Finally, viewers and learners, regardless of how you view the rejection of the Japanese proposal for racial equality, Japan benefited from its participation in World War I. Now, let's look at the benefits Japan received. Here's a final question for this topic. In what ways did Japan benefit from World War I? Japan was actually well rewarded by the Treaty of Versailles for its assistance to the Allies in World War I. The German colonies and the territories in the Pacific, which Japan wanted, were indeed given to it. The Marihanas, the Carolines and the Marshall Island groups were given to Japan. These island groups became major Japanese strongholds in World War II. The Japanese claim to Shandong was also accepted by the Allies, giving Japan a major foothold in China. Even the German concessions in Yatsu Bay were transferred to Japan. Other benefits from the war besides the acquisition of land were that Japan did not suffer nearly as many casualties as European countries because the war was mostly fought on the European and African soil. The mainland of Japan was not affected to the extent that other European countries were. Towards the end of the war, Japan increasingly sold and supplied much needed war materials to its European allies. The money from these wartime sales contributed significantly to the diversity of the Japanese industries and its increased exports. Viewers, listeners, thank you for watching our lesson today on the impact of the Paris Peace Treaties on Japan. Before we say goodbye, 
let's have a brief summary of the questions we did today. Japan agreed when asked by the Allied forces to enter the First World War for prestige in world affairs and to expand its sphere of influence in China and the Pacific. The Allied forces relied on Japan because it occupied German leased territories and protected sea lanes in the West Pacific and Indian Ocean against the German Navy. It also assisted Britain in the Mediterranean Sea. After the war, the Allies awarded Japan with German colonies and territories in the Pacific, the Marianas, the Carolines, and the Marshall Island groups. Japan's claim to Shandong, which gave its major foothold in China, and German concessions in Yuhatsu Bay. Japan sold and supplied much needed war materials to the European Allies. The Paris Peace Conference did not satisfy Japan, as it felt its land allocations were smaller than those given to France, Britain and the USA, which did not match the effort it invested in the war. Japan wanted complete control of China. The Treaty of Versailles also refused to endorse the clause Japan proposed on equality of races. Japan was especially hurt that it was Britain that opposed Japan's racial equality claim, the country that asked the Japanese assistance in the war. This led to the start of tension between Japan and the Western nations. Viewers, this brings us to the end of this lesson. I trust that you have enjoyed the lesson and learning with me and that you understand the effect of the peace treaties on Japan. Thanks for watching and join us soon for lesson three. Goodbye.